Tink, tink. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Tim here. This is a project I am so excited for. As you know, we like to tinker with bow stuff. And this year, we are going to be doing some serious arrow tinkering. Just trying to build the strongest, most forgiving arrow we can. And we're gonna run some arrows through the paces and kind of figure out what works best for our setup. It's kind of a unique situation because Dan's setup is different than mine. So we're both kind of working towards what's gonna work best for our setups and just building from there. All right, well, let's open this stuff up. As we're going through it, I wanna talk about a couple things that was pretty cool. An owner and founder of Iron Will Outfitters took some time to talk to me on the phone. His name is Bill Vander Hayden and he got to kind of explain their system to me. So we're testing iron will stuff and ethics archery components. We asked you guys in a video, a tinkering video a while back, what we should test. And this was definitely what came up in the comments. So both companies just kind of gave me some education, really helped me out. The guy I talked to on the phone from ethics archery just goes by Big Haas. So shout out to Big Haas for taking some time on the phone and just talking to me about your products, how they work and stuff like that. I know both of these companies, they're just trying to help archers create more forgiving setups. Let's hop in, check it out. So we'll go with Iron Will first here. We got impact collars. We'll bust those open, see what they're all about. Twice, so I didn't steal it. And we are gonna tinker with some broadheads. And by we, I mean me. If you guys have never heard of Iron Will Outfitters, they're definitely a higher tier product. But their whole thing is they're just trying to create, they're trying to create the highest quality products they can. Bill broke it down for me, talked about his experience using these things, why they make them out of multiple pieces of metal. Looking forward to tinkering with these, but really what today's about is the arrow components. I'm pretty stoked to test these. Check those out. They are just really sexy and clean. Look at that. All right, let's do this really quick. Let's do a shave test. Will they shave me? Oh yeah. Yeah, no problems there. All right, before we get too weird here, let's close that up. Thank you guys. i um, excited to test these iron wheel broadheads and take it from there. So I got hit inserts. 75 grains as well as impact collars that are 25 grains. That's gonna add 100 grains to the front end plus whatever on top of that. Impact collars plus inserts. Check those out. I actually have an arrow here. I wanna kinda of show you guys how these are gonna work, but they're supposed to slide right over the arrow. And I guess you can use epoxy if you want. It does add some structural stability, but it's not a need. Um, anyway, would be really curious for you guys and your best practices if you've dealt with using these before. But let me get an arrow and kind of show you how they're supposed to work. Okay, here's the RIP TKO 250 spine. It's been a pretty good arrow for me. I've dug it so far. This is going to go inside the arrow. Boom. And we're gonna do a build and talk more about this stuff. We're gonna get it inside the arrow. And then these are supposed to slip right over the top. And yeah, it's basically working just like it's supposed to. So these I think are kind of ingenious in a way. If you take a look, they don't go all the way to the end. They get close, but not all the way to the end. And the reason for that is when you go to put something over the top of it, when you screw your field point in, it clamps that back into it. So you're not permanently stuck with this on there. Although if it was gonna be your hunting setup, just offhand, I would probably, I would probably throw a little bit of epoxy on there because why not? But for the purpose of tinkering, that's amazing because we don't have to ruin an arrow every time we build one. Props to them for that. It's the Iron Will stuff. These are 75s and 25s. They also have some different options to for you to try to get your weight right. This was what I wanted to start with and, and take it from there. Okay, so good job, Iron Will, on your packaging. We're gonna test these babies out, see what it's like. And they got them to me really quick, which was appreciated. So did Ethics Archery as well. They shipped their stuff out pretty quick. So props to you guys for doing that. I know everybody today wants their stuff now. I think it's a good sign when a company's shipping their stuff out ASAP. It means they got their stuff together. So here's my stuff from Ethics Archery. I ordered a few things from them, but mainly arrow components plus field tips. 
Their field tips have been pretty good to me. So I also got the test pack in case I wanted to test different field points. They range from 100 to 200 grains and you can get them bigger too. I don't think I'm gonna mess with these weights much, but I wanted to have them just in case I was changing arrow weights and we're testing apples to apples to try to get the same arrow weight to test. And if you guys have any good ideas for testing once we get these arrows built, definitely let us know below in the comments. We have ideas to test these things, but we want to test for how true they fly and the structural integrity that they add to the arrow. That's what's most exciting to me. Some 125 field points and some 150 field points, just because I don't know what broadhead I'm going to settle on yet. I wanted to have a variety of field points to test. Little invoice, didn't steal them. I didn't get these from free from either of these companies. And I kind of wanted it to be that way because I really wanted to give my honest opinion on, on what's going to happen with these things. The other thing about these ethics archery arrows, talking with Big Hoss, shout out to Big Hoss. Uh, he said that they, they made a new sleeve that was basically the perfect size for my arrows. A lot of times when you're messing around with these components, like you're supposed to sand down the arrow so you get a super snug fit, but this is supposed to fit just perfect. I have some flexibility. I can go from 130 to 220 grains with this system. So you could probably see that. I hope maybe you can. The stainless sleeve is 60 grains. The post is 160 and the post can go down to 130. So they also make aluminum, but when I was talking with Big Haas and he's out talking to me about compromise and what we're trying to create, basically if you're trying to create the most structural integrity, we want to stick with stainless steel. That does add weight to your setup. So when you add weight, you lose speed and stuff like that. I just wanted to stick with, let's try to create structural stability first, and then we'll come back on our weight later if we need to. But let's take a look at how these things are going to work. So the way this will work is we'll get this thing glued in here. That basically matches up right with the end of my arrow. This will slide right over the top and we'll jam it down. And then, yeah, you were just gonna have a sleeve left on the arrow and the post on the inside. So it'll look something like that when it's all said and done. Like you said, we're adding weight to the setup. I think it's a fair compromise. Well, we wanted to test it because why not? It's the off season, it's a perfect time to do that. And I know when we're shooting like these thin arrows, it, you know, structural integrity, it's a good thing. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any ideas as to how we should test this or best practices to get these things set up, just let us know below in the comments. Just doing a little tink tink in 2021. If you dig this archery content, subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy this kind of tinkering, give it a thumbs up and we will catch you back here for the next one.